Good afternoon, everyone. We are now admitting the people inside of the workshop. Yeah, we have also a recording of this workshop. Don't be scared of the message on top. And I will kindly ask all of you, if you're not speaking, please mute yourself so that we don't disturb Olivier. However, if you have any questions and if you want to join live the workshop and ask why, just unmute yourself and don't be shy to ask. Let's wait for one more, two more minutes, maybe, Olivia. We have sure. more people who are just coming in. Yeah. Good to see so much people on Friday afternoon. <laughs> Okay, there is one question. Actually, can we get record permission, uh, Ranjit? I don't know if you can get the record permission, but for sure we are recording this workshop. Uh, it will be available in the event platform. It will be also available on the official Apache CloudStack YouTube channel. So if you're interested and want to check it out, Please subscribe for the YouTube channel, and I'm pretty sure that Olivier will also upload his slides somewhere after yeah. the talk. Okay, Olivier, the stage is yours. Let's start. Okay, let's start. So uh, thank you, Yvette. Um, so uh, today is my uh, second uh, part of uh, my series of talk uh, for this uh, CloudStack collaboration conference. So. Um, uh, it's all about XCPNG and CloudStack and um, uh, yesterday was uh, a talk regarding the introduction on what is XCPNG, the project, and why it makes sense uh, to uh, use that project as a virtualization platform with CloudStack. Um, I put a link in the presentation. Uh, again, this presentation is directly available on vets.fr slash CCC work, like workshop. Uh, you can see the URL uh, on the bottom of this presentation. So if you want to access the links and, and read more about it, feel free. And the uh, talks, uh, the talk from yesterday was the same URL, but uh, CCC talk instead of CCC uh, work. So today is more about uh, starting to go into more technical details on XCPNG and how actually uh, build uh, this solution with both XCPNG and CloudStack. So that's the topic of today. Um, for those seeing yesterday's presentation, I will uh, go a bit faster on those slides. Um, I'm the Fate CEO and co-founder. I'm also a Linux and Zen guy since a while now. I created two projects, Zen Orchestra and XCPNG. You can take a look on the XCPNG website if you want to download the ISO on xcpng.org. Uh, there is no registration process whatsoever. It's completely open, so you can test uh, with the uh, software very easily. Vates, the company behind all of that, uh, the French company based in the Alps uh, in France and Grenoble. Uh, we are uh, building open source solution uh, since uh, a bit now. And uh, when I say building, it's a lot of research and development and the team is uh, approximately uh, 25 people. What we do, uh, we do XCPNG, the virtualization platform and Zen Orchestra, the administration uh, web UI for it. And uh, so in very short, as again, we, uh, uh, I presented XCPNG project itself yesterday, but uh, to recap very, very fast, uh, XCPNG is a distribution like a, a usual, I would say, Linux distro, but uh, made for Zen to build a Zen hypervisor in a way that's easy to use. Uh, so you can see that as a kind of turnkey distribution with Zen on it, and in fact, uh, that's the only one, the only official one Zen distribution because XCPNG is hosted inside the uh, Linux Foundation within uh, the Zen project itself. Zen Orchestra is the uh, management platform and it's made for system administrators and providing uh, something like a vCenter equivalent, uh, if, you, if you like. So... Uh, now we'll enter more into details on uh, those uh, two things, XCPNG and CloudStack, and how to build something from your server from the middle up to using it uh, with CloudStack. 
So when you build an XCPNG cluster, basically you have your pools. And just to be uh, to be clear, a cluster is a pool. Uh, pool is a name in the XCPNG world, but basically that's exact same concept. You have machines that are stick together, having a shared storage. You can live migrate the two machines between all the hosts within this pool within this cluster, and you manage them with Zen Orchestra. You can even make some backup with Zen Orchestra. So today is all about uh, the how to do that, but then uh, how to connect this to CloudStack uh, and, for, for example, from your existing CloudStack, uh, how to add those uh, cluster to it. So before uh, talking about how to add your XCPNG cluster uh, within uh, CloudStack, we'll talk about, about the basics, uh, the technical you know, foundation on, on what is all of that. Uh, to, and give you some kind of main principles, you know, so um, how XCPNG is working inside the overall picture uh, and some good ideas in general to apply when you build cluster and not only with XCPNG, but uh, almost all other hypervisors on the market, the best practices and do's and don'ts. So, uh, you know, you are uh, building this the more efficient way possible. So for people that aren't really used to uh, Zen itself uh, and XCPNG, it's somehow a bit different than, for example, KVM or things like that. Uh, because when you boot a physical machine with XCPNG installed, you won't boot directly on a Linux kernel. You will boot first on Zen, which is a kind of, let's say, uh, a, a big microkernel uh, that's having all the CPU and memory handlings. And this... Uh, Zen uh, thing will then start a uh, privileged VM uh, called the DOM0, and this virtual machine got access to all the hardware available on the hosts, but it doesn't have access to all the memory nor all the CPUs. So for example, if you SSH to an XCPNG host with, I don't know, hundreds of CPU, you might see only eight or 16 CPUs and only four gig or eight gig of RAM. That's normal. It's not the host, it's just a part of it. The DOM0 is made to manage all your virtual machines via the DOM0. So in fact, the Linux uh, uh, distro booting as the DOM0 will have all the native drivers to manage the network, the storage, uh, having open vSwitch to do all the VLANs and so on. So uh, this is the DOM0 that will handle how the management for all the other VMs. The other VMs, on the other hand, are called the DOM use, but that's kind of a very specific Zen name, but we use VMs in general, but it helps to make you the difference between the DOM zero, the privileged one, and the DOM use, the uh, non-privileged VM that will only access what Zen wants to give uh, to it. So that's why it's a bit different if you are used to KVM, for example, where the host is everything already. So um, this is a kind of... Um, a uh, really important slide, I would say, uh, when you build your infrastructure and not only in XCPNG, I would say that in general, you will have uh, to make things easy to use, you know? So what it means easy to use? Easy to use is to rely on the KISS principle and the KISS principle is keep it simple and stupid. So what does it mean? Well, this means that, and I will, I will quote that because this is truly, truly important to understand. Most systems work best if they are kept simple rather than made complicated. Therefore, simplicity should be a key goal in design and unnecessary complexity should be avoided. So if you keep that in mind when you build your cluster, regardless you are using VMware, XCPNG, KVM, whatever, that's really, really important because that's the difference between what you want and what you need. And if you follow this principle in general, you will keep your uptime very high and avoid any downtime. So we'll give you, I will give you more example in the next part of the presentation, but be sure this is really important. And a kind of friend principle of the keys principle with Yagni, you aren't gonna need it. So it's, as I said, uh, you have to make the difference and sometimes it's hard <laughs> between something that you need and something that you want. Uh, a good example is high availability or things like that. Uh, uh, because in general, adding more features mean having more, uh, you know, maintenance for it and maybe more problems and harder problems to debug when you have got a problem. And that's why also I, I'm, I know that it's uh, not common to, 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 to listen, but a single point of failure, uh, SPOF, 
are not uh, a bad thing, uh, always a bad thing. Um, I mean by that, if uh, you are trading complexity for something simple, but that could be a single point of failure, it's fine if it's simple to fix, replace, or restore, because you, when the problem happens, it's very clear and the downtime could be really minimal, opposed to something that's maybe not a spot, but far more complex. And if it doesn't work, then you can spend a lot of time trying to fix it. And then it, in, in general, the downtime could be longer. So KISS principle is a really good thing to keep in mind when you build your XCPNG clusters in general, but I think it applies to almost any IT project. By the way, it was uh, made for uh, uh, building, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, hardware in the US Navy uh, back in the World War II, so this is not something really recent, and I think it applies to a lot of different things, not just IT. So anyway, uh, in terms of break practices, best practices for XCPNG, um, you will have to make your choice when you will decide to create the smallest brick. Remember, uh, you will make, you will build your clusters to then use them in um, CloudStack. So all the question is, well, how big I will create uh, those clusters? Should I create very small clusters, bigger clusters? Uh, it might require some work to make some smaller cluster, but on on the other hand. Uh, they are less uh, prone to failure if once shared storage fails in a very large cluster, you will lose access to all the VMs on this cluster. So that's why uh, after some discussions, uh, both within my team and also with uh, uh, CloudStack uh, engineers, we, we've we decided that to get a kind of rule of thumb, uh, something between six and 12 hours is in general a good idea because it might be a sweet spot. Obviously, it depends on your requirements, but to give you at least an idea on the order of, order of magnitude, something like that around 10 hours makes sense because it's big enough to get a lot of uh, uh, compute and, and storage power, but on, on, the, same, uh, uh, on the same way, uh, if you have a, a, a big problem in this cluster, you, you won't lose a ton of hosts at the same time for whatever reason. And in general, in XCPNG, you can go up to 16 without problem. You can even go further, but then you will consume more and more CPU to get uh, the uh, database uh, managing all the hosts all together. So 16 is fine if you want to go further. It's possible, but you really have to get a, a good reason to do it. So let's go to the DOM0. Uh, the DOM0 yeah. is your uh, uh, regular can, Linux distro. Can I interrupt you, sorry. Yeah. Sure, sure, go ahead. We, uh, we don't see your slides moving, so... Uh, can, uh, can, can you see the best practices slide? No, no it's on the first slide uh, for a couple of us, so it's stuck on the first slide, just showing the first slide out of 27. Okay, so let me try to uh, reshare the screen to be sure. Apologies for interrupting you. No, 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 no problem. Uh, it's, it's, it's better with the slides. <laughs> uh, let me... Stop sharing and resharing again. A portion of screen, share, and there. Can you see it right now? Uh, we see what I believe are two screens. Uh, at least I can see uh, some slide uh, just partial, and then the. Uh, okay, let, let me try again. Maybe I uh, I don't uh, I shouldn't move the uh, the zone of sharing. And portion of screen, share, and this. Yeah, is that's, that that's better? Good. That's good, thank uh, you. Okay, so sorry for that. Uh, again, you can have access to the slide in parallel if you, if you want. Um, so I was uh, talking about the, the best practices. So uh, regarding the DOM0, uh, the DOM0 isn't your regular Linux distro. It means that you shouldn't modify it as possible. It's made to be as turnkey as possible. So again, uh, if you modify things, you really must know what you do and you should have a good reason to do it. So that's why it's important to keep, uh, to keep it uh, in touch as possible. And when you want to interact, with your DOM0 in general, you are using the API. So the API is uh, the main way to access XCPNG. So you can use Xanokistra, for example, as the main client to access it, to change, for example, the network names, creating bonds, and so on and so on. So you don't need any specific knowledge to do it. You can rely on uh, just uh, calling the API, but obviously through a, a client. So it's easier to do it uh, than, for example, the CLI, uh, CLI and so on. 
If you have uh, machines with a lot of memory, uh, like for example, 64 gig of RAM, uh, the DOM0 memory, so remember that's the privileged VM doing all the management stuff, and storage and network stuff, you should give at least eight gig of RAM to it uh, because that's uh, really important. So there's enough you know, room to breathe for all the management uh, features. So that's why that's a rule of thumb, but eight gig should be enough regardless of uh, the amount of memory you have. If you have even more than, uh, I don't know, hundreds of gig of RAM, even one terabyte, eight gigs should be enough uh, for the DOM zero. But obviously you can uh, keep an eye on the memory consumption of it uh, if you want to, to be sure. So quick tips on things you shouldn't avoid to do in general, but uh, some advice I think can apply in general on your whole infrastructure, not just, you know, uh, uh, XCPNG. Uh, keeping things up to date is really important. And after years of doing support, I can tell you that uh, it's not always the case uh, with uh, our users, but uh, I know there's some work, so that's why we are trying to work to make XCPNG updates uh, as simple as possible. So through Zen Orchestra, it's really easy to update uh, and even to have a kind of rolling pull updates doing all the uh, installation uh, and intended. So you can you know, keep up with mainly security updates and also fixing bugs. Uh, even, uh, you know, uh, XCPNG is in LTS right now, the 8.2, uh, we have uh, security updates almost once a month and uh, it matters for uh, <laughs> this security uh, issues in general. Uh, the same applies for your firmware, BIOS, UFI, or IPME updates uh, from your, you know, manufacturer, Dell, HP, whatever. Um, applying those patches is also critical in terms of security. Uh, as you may know, since the last three or four years, since we got all the Intel uh, vulnerabilities in the CPU, uh, it's more critical than ever to get everything up to date from the hardware, firmware, BIOS, everything uh, up to the virtualization platform and obviously uh, everything up uh, in the stack. But if you have, uh, you know, something not correctly patched uh, on the, the, I would say, um, the hardware level or, or down in the stack, then uh, the, the potential issues can be uh, even bigger than just having one application and not patch. So that's why it, it matters a lot. If you have doubts on your hardware, uh, you should really do not hesitate to investigate. Uh, we've seen, you shouldn't you know, underestimate uh, uh, the capability of your hardware to, to get some, uh, some issues. And if you are stuck in general, it's also sometimes people uh, hesitate to do, but you shouldn't to, to call for professional support at CloudStack or XCPNG level as soon as you got a, a question or problem, because sometimes it could spare you days of investigating because maybe it's a known problem, a known problem or something like that. Uh, so, so that's why asking for help is uh, really important. And again, I'd like to, uh, to remind that uh, the uh, obvious keys principle, don't try to uh, make things over complicated because uh, this will cause you, in general, more problems that, that could solve them. So on the three main uh, things with XCPNG, there's the usual, you know, uh, things to do, try to avoid mixing different generation CPUs. Well, in in a cluster, in a pool in XCPNG, it will reduce the CPU features to the lowest CPU, so that will work, but that's not great. And obviously, in general, for the sake of simplicity, it's better to get a cluster with the same hardware because it's easier to deal with and having the same, even same size hardware in terms of number of cores, memory, networks, make it easier to manage because you got your cluster with this kind of hardware, you got the other cluster with this kind of hardware. It's more coherent and easier to balance because if you have machines with far less memory, well, it will work. That's okay. But then uh, when you have to evacuate a house for doing some management on it, if you, are, you want to evacuate the house with a lot of memory, then uh, it might not fit for the other machines. So that's why having everyone at the same level of sizing uh, is in general a good idea. The storage part is the part that is the most relevant regarding the keep it simple and stupid because to be fair, I would say a big third of our support tickets from users are related to storage. Mainly because storage is something that's not embedded in the solution, but something that you can connect. So you can have configuration issues, which is most of the issues you, you might have. 
So to give you some example of things that could stay simple and that, that aren't is, for example, the MTU. Um, the ratio between what something could bring in terms of performance or feature against the problem is really bad for the MTU change. Uh, right now, modern CPUs can handle the default MTUs. It, it made more sense uh, 10 years ago with a low, powerful, less powerful CPUs, but now it's far less you know, important. So keep it at the default one because believe me, I think I could spare a lot of days in my life trying to debug that uh, for different customers because when you got a mis NTU mismatch, it's really, really hard to discover at some point. For example, you put uh, 9,000 for all your storage side and, and host side, and for whatever reason, a switch or the NAS resets to the basic NTU, and then you start to really have very, very hard problems to track. So keeping this at the default value is in general far better than modifying it. Uh, and for NFS, uh, because in terms of storage, that's the easiest one. Yes, XCPNG is working with iSCSI in multipass. Yes, it, this would work. Uh, this is something known and used since the uh, last 10 years. But in general, people with something less simple will have less uh, downtime. So in short, it means that from my experience in the last let's say even more than the XCPG existence, but even when we were helping customers with Zen server, so it's let's say six, seven years, I can tell you that people with a simple storage architecture were having far less downtime, even with single point of failure than people with more complicated setups. So um, if you absolutely need a high ability on NFS, there's solution that exists, but on the storage side that you don't need to manage from the XCPG side. So for example, uh, if you want to rely on something a bit more expensive, but that works well in HA. You can rely on NetApp stuff, which is not to get known to get a high ability working well in NFS. But otherwise, uh, keep it simple as possible. But another example on something that, yes, adding a feature, but totally worth it, is the LACP, uh, because it's simple, it works pretty well. Uh, we didn't, we, I think, almost never had issues, uh, uh, at least feedback from users regarding those issues. It's simple, it's proven technologies. So the ratio is pretty good. I mean, it, it gives you something reliable and in exchange, it's not that hard to configure and maintain. So that's the kind of thing that stay KISS, but providing you uh, really interesting stuff. So that's why uh, LACP is a good example of thing you could have without a lot of complexity and bringing you really interesting stuff without uh, uh, a big cost. Regarding the network itself, when you install XCPNG, you will have, for example, Phonix. By default, it will create one network, which is the equivalent of a virtual switch uh, at some point. And it will name that uh, the first NIC will be network zero, the second one, network one, network three, and network four. So that's the default naming of this network. And again, you can easily create a, a LACP on top of it. You can do that from Zen Orchestra, it works well. Uh, there's no problem to do it and it will change the name. So the new network we'd called by default, I think is uh, bond zero plus one, uh, indicating that's a NIC zero plus one in the same LACP bond. Then the hardware. Um, okay, so if you can choose your hardware in terms of NICs, if you choose to install XCPNG, like but I heard it's not just XCPNG, like but also the hypervisor, we have a very, very, very bad, a very low opinion on broad, Broadcom stuff. Um, I can say at least for the pre-2019 stuff because we have less uh, feedback on Broadcom issues uh, since a recent generation. But believe me, uh, the Broadcom hardware before that uh, period is really bad in terms of hardware. Uh, in terms of firmware, in terms of drivers. That's uh, imagine something horrible and multiply it by uh, at least 10. So we are in general telling people that if you have network problem, the Broadcom cards, the easiest path is to switch to Intel or Mellanox, which are working uh, very, very well. So uh, if I have one hardware advice to give you today, it's, <laughs> it's this one. So regarding installing XCPNG, uh, well, that's really not uh, rocket science, unlike the logo of XCPNG. Uh, it's very, very simple. Uh, you just download the ISO, you DD the ISO on a USB key, and then you just follow instruction, uh, next, next, next. 
and that's pretty much it. Uh, so that's that easy that it doesn't even worth a demo uh, and spending time of it. Uh, so it's uh, that simple. It's everything is almost you know uh, answering basic questions. And also this ISO you can uh, DD on a USB key can be used to make major upgrades between you know different version of XCP. Let's say for example you still have the 8.1, you want to go to 8.2, you just download the 8.2 version on USB key, boot your machine on it, and then it will detect the previous installation, and it will say you can upgrade it. And upgrade means that you can uh, you will have a backup of your previous installation in your dedicated partition. So if anything is going bad, you can reboot it and it will detect the previous version, you will be able to roll back. So that's why upgrading with the uh, ISO process is uh, pretty straightforward, but also uh, kind of resilient because you can roll back if anything is going bad. So um, obviously, uh, Manual installation is one thing, but we'll see later that you can have automation on it. Regarding the partitioning, uh, basically when you install XCPNG on uh, OneDrive, uh, it will have six partitions. So that's the way it's done by default. You can't modify it. That's uh, uh, the way it works. And it, remember, it's a kind of, a, you know, it's a distro, yes, but it's a distro meant to be used as a turnkey solution. So it's not meant to be flexible on, on various level. And in, in change of that, uh, you trade for simplicity and things that just works. So you have your root partition of uh, 18 gig, the same partition as backup partition as we've seen just before to be able to roll back. Uh, the free space uh, after everything will be used, will might be used for a local storage repository if you want to host with some machine locally. You have a partition for the BIOS UEFI, one for the VAR log, and finally one for the swap. So this is how it works for the default partitioning. And um, it's uh, something, it was introduced by Zen Server back in, uh, I think, 2017, 2016, something like that. Uh, before it was uh, only four gig for the root partition, it wasn't enough, but now it's pretty modern and, and the backup partition is really handy if you want to, to roll back. And yes, automation. So I suppose that as soon as you have more than 10 or 20 machine, you want to have automation when you deploy XCPNG uh, inside your infrastructure. So to do that, you can deploy it with PXC, IPXC. Uh, there's no problem. And you can pass to the Grub uh, booting with Pixie IPXC uh, configuration file to get fully attended installation thanks to a small XML file that's called the answer file. So as it's uh, the name tells, it's a file with all the answer for the installation. So you don't even have to take a look on it. It just boots, it will do all the installation the way you would you like, and that's it, it's ready to work. Um, so you can pass different parameters inside the sensor file, like the uh, where you want to install it on which disk, the key map, um, where to find the packages, the time zone, which uh, NICs will be the management interface, you can even pass the password if you like. And if you don't, on the next reboot after the installation, it will ask you for the password on the first time. So you can even you know, make passwordless installation if you don't want to make a, a hard-coded password for your unintended installation. Finally, you can also um, uh, integrate a post-install script. So if you want to configure, uh, make extra configuration, specific configuration, uh, into your installation, you can do it. You can even use it to call, for example, uh, let's say webhook, uh, if you want to be notified when the installation is done. You can, in your post-install script, just have a curl telling uh, your program that's listening somewhere in your infrastructure that it's done, in installed with this host name, this IP address, or even fill, I don't know, uh, an IPAM to, to get the IP address in it. Well, you can do a, a lot of different scenarios. And it's documented if you want to take a look into to the, uh, all the possibilities, all the keys you can pass to the answer file, you can go into the official documentation and find what's needed. So that's very flexible and that's how we can you know, deploy XCPNG at scale without having to do it manually. So now you install one machine or even let's say 10 machines. Uh, so that's great. You have 10 machine running XCPNG. Each machine is, uh, you know, its own in its own cluster. So by default, when you install one XCPNG, it will be one host inside one pool. Okay. And if you want to get a pool with multiple machine, you have multiple things to do before. So first, uh, we will do 
uh, the LACP. So um, in Zen Orchestra, for example, you just have to uh, very easily take multiple, create a new new network, tell using this NIC and this NIC into LACP, and that will work. But you have to take care on the naming. And so to show you a screenshot, when you go into the pool view in the network tab, for example, in Zen Orchestra, you can change the name uh, of the network by the name you need. But this name will be used in Cloud Stack. So you need to really take care of the name of the network you will choose because that's exactly the name that you will be used by Cloud Stack to detect the network. So for example, in Cloud Stack, if you go into the physical network uh, and for example, on the management physical network, uh, you will configure for the traffic type of the Zen network label and, and the label should match exactly you know, even the space uh, to the uh, cloud stack, uh, to the XCPNG name of the network. Otherwise, cloud stack won't be able to find the right network. So that's why it's really important to name them the right way. You can modify the name on the cloud stack side or the XCPNG, XCPNG side. Doesn't matter as long as they are uh, getting the exact same name in the end. So that's what you do on the first host on the, on the other, uh, you know, nine other hosts you installed. You don't need to add the shared storage repository right now. It will be done by CloudStack. So for now, when you have done the network configuration, you will just add the other hosts inside the uh, pool, uh, the first one we created. So uh, when you decide on those 10 hosts, this one will be the master. I'm configuring it right now. Uh, when the configuration is done, you will add the nine other one into the pool, for example, and they will automatically get all the uh, LACP done, the naming done, everything will be done automatically because slaves, then when they are integrated into a pool, will get all the configuration from the master. Uh, so that's really, really convenient. So you, you make the configuration once for a cluster and then everything will be done automatically. So when this is done, you're almost there. The next step is uh, on the cloud stack side of things. In cloud stack, that's pretty simple. In fact, it's like for other many for other uh, other hypervisors. So you add a cluster, a Zen server type because that's the name of the connector. Uh, Zen server type will work both for Citrix hypervisor and XCPNG. Uh, it means that's the type, the generic type. Uh, you will add a host, um, and you only need to add the host pointing to the pool master. You don't need to add every host because uh, CloudStack will detect the pool and automatically see all the other hosts in the pool. So you only target one machine in a cluster, one into nine, uh, nine others, so one in ten, sorry, and you will have all the machines, uh, all the hosts display in CloudStack. This initial phase can take a few seconds to minimize depending on the number of machines because CloudStack need to connect to each host, do downloading some libraries and do some configuration. So that takes a few minutes, but then uh, you will be ready on that side. Then you could add the storage. So if you, uh, I don't know, prepare the NFS storage connected to the cluster, to the XCPNG pool, then you could add it from uh, the CloudStack side. So uh, it's simple adding a new NFS, uh, giving the, uh, um, you know, the IP address and the share uh, to CloudStack CloudStack and it will attach it directly to the XCPNG uh, pool. So because CloudStack like Zen Orchestra or any clients will connect to the API, there's nothing else to do that will be attached automatically thanks to CloudStack. If you want to see that in an actual, in a, in a real demonstration, uh, Andrea made a really nice video on YouTube. So I didn't want to, uh, you know, make exactly the same thing twice. Uh, it did that. Or if you want to find it because you don't have the link right now, you just type cloud stack XCPNG. That's the first results on YouTube. And you will see that directly through uh, the uh, cloud stack interface uh, in live. And, uh, and it's, Pretty, pretty straightforward. So mainly the things to know, uh, because installing XCPNG is not complicated, uh, attaching it to CloudStack is not complicated. So the main important stuff to understand is uh, how XCPNG is working, the main principles to respect in general, to don't make any mistakes when you design things. And then making the initial configuration is almost only doing the network thing and then connect it to CloudStack. So it's not hard, it works pretty well. And the latest thing that is really, again, important uh, is keep it simple and stupid as far as possible when you are building your infrastructure. This will save you a lot of time. 
So that's it for the uh, general review on how to build your XCPNG clusters and connecting them to CloudStack. If you got questions, I'm happy to hear them and, uh, and to, to discuss about it. We have one opening question, which is coming from Andrea, actually, and it's what does KISS mean? <laughs> <laughs> yes, because um, <laughs> Yeah, it, it was displayed in the uh, presentation, so it's an acronym for Keep It Simple and Stupid. So I put the, uh, <laughs> the slide on the screen. And believe me, uh, this one is truly something that would have saved me entire days in my entire careers. Really, really, this is something I really, really love the definition because uh, that's true for a lot of things and that's even more true for IT and building virtualized infrastructure. <laughs> The thing is, Olivier, uh, I think that's why Andrew is asking the question. It actually st stands for keep it simple, stupid, not keep it simple yeah. and stupid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry, not, yeah, not and stupid. Yeah, stupid, yeah, sorry. Obviously, yes, uh, it's too, but yeah, yeah, sure. Your, your French, your English is better than my French, but... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, in all cases, it's a good strategy to start with a kiss. I totally agree with this. Let's go with the next question. So who would like to join us live and ask a question? Come on, guys. I know it's Friday evening, but I'm pretty sure <laughs> we cannot be more shy than this. Are there okay. any plans? Mm -hmm. Yep. Apologies if I'm not interrupting. Um, uh, are there any plans uh, to actually, uh, you know, keep uh, XCPNG as a potentially separate hypervisor in cloud stack? Uh, I know there were some discussions, uh, you know, historically. Right now, it's basically kind of uh, same as, as the Zen in, in sense of it's seen as Zen server in cloud stack. So do, do you see anything there having to change or no? Should we explicitly state that this is XCPNG if, if you're going to do some changes versus the vanilla uh, Zen server? Okay, so um, uh, let, let, uh, let me know if I uh, got it correctly. Uh, the thing is, uh, should we maybe in the future have a different way to uh, communicate with CloudStack? Uh, well, CloudStack having using a different kind of driver to communicate with XCPNG, or if we want to stay close to the current uh, uh, API that's used by Citrix and keeping you know things very similar. Uh, is that uh, is that the question you had? Yeah. 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 Okay. So that's a, a very good question. So in terms of projects. Uh, XCPNG is a friendly fork of Citrix Hypervisor in a way that we are contributing upstream and we want to keep it uh, uh, as close as possible from the Citrix Hypervisor. In the same time, um, we've seen how CloudStack is connecting to VMware, for example, and not connecting directly through the host, but going through vCenter. And we might think about uh, building um, a new public API for Zen Orchestra that's very simple and that might be at some point relevant to connect from the cloud stack perspective. But this is kind of uh, prospective right now. It's not yet, you know, uh, uh, something done, but I think at some point that could be really interesting to discuss with uh, cloud stack people consuming APIs to get their opinion on what's great on this one and what's great on the other one and try to see if there's something we can do uh, even from our perspective because you know we are building uh, we will build a real public API for Zen Orchestra because currently our API is used by people but it wasn't made for this uh, in uh, in originally but uh, we know that more and more people are requesting a simple public API maybe a rest API so uh, when building it we might need uh, in fact uh, the cloud stack developer experience on what's great on consuming an API and what's not uh, on top of a virtualization platform and this experience that cloud stack developers has consuming those API might be really helpful for us to build something that's relevant and maybe in the future use as a real middleware uh, between XCPNG and the cloud stack. So we'll see, but I, I think at some point uh, we'll have to get a, a discussion with uh, the cloud stack developer to learn uh, what are the best thing we could do building a new API for Zen Orchestra. 
Thank you, Olivia. Any other questions? If you don't have any other questions as a marketing person, I will just use the chance to share a few more things. Uh, as Olivia said, we have a really awesome video which was made by Andrea about how you can use XCPNG and CloudStack. In addition to it, we have recorded a video interview with Olivier and uh, Mark from XCPNG, which will be soon uh, live on the Apache CloudStack YouTube channel. And I would like to make one teasing. We have created a case study with XCPNG, CloudStack, and uh, the leading hosting company in, Fran in France, which is AQ. So that's also going to be live in the next weeks. So please, yeah, follow us on the social channels and you will see all these awesome things.